Welcome. This question says a sinusoidal wave has an amplitude of 3 meters, has a wavelength of 2 meters, it has a velocity, it's traveling at 4 meters per second to the right, uh, and it asks us what is our y displacement of a point located 5 meters to the right of the origin at time t equals 1.2 seconds. So let's begin by visualizing it. I'm going to draw this relatively carefully. So let's take a picture of the wave at times t equals zero. It's a sine wave and it starts off and it looks something like that. So this is this is x and that's at t equals zero. So we could imagine saying, oh, when time t equals zero, pick a value of x and tell me the y displacement. That would be that would be a, a, a question you could ask. Um, but this is just a little bit more involved. This is saying, well, not only do we vary the position of where we're interested, but we also vary the time that we're interested in. So the next thing we have to do is ask ourselves what happens when time passes. And what we see, I'm going to try and draw this again carefully, is that as time passes, the wave moves physically, in this case to the right, because the velocities because it says the waves to the right. Uh, if I do a, I don't know if this is going to, again, so this is time passing. I can draw it well. Um, so we can see here that if I was to pick, if I was to have picked a certain value of x, then depending upon what my time was, I would have very different values for my y displacement. So I need to be careful about this. Um, so let's try and clean up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of these guys. Go back to my original. Okay. Um, and let's, for the sake of it, let's pick a value of Let's pick a value of, uh, of x. So I'm going to assume there's my value of x that I'm interested in, and there's my value of y. And that's at time t equals 0. Notice, please, that t passing so let's let's look at let's look at this point x as time passes this first crest has just passed the next crest will pass the next crest will pass the next crest will cast because all the crests are moving in the same direction as the velocity so for a given situation at time t equals zero, if I want to know what happens at a later time, what I can do is look further back along the wave. If this crest is going to get to me at a certain time, this crest will be at me at a later time. So because the velocity is to the right, future times can be observed by looking to the left. Does that make sense? Because the, ve the velocity is to the right, because all these crests move to the right, I can see what's going to happen in the future time by looking to the left of the point of interest. That crest eventually will get to the point x I can look at that crest before it gets to point x by simply looking to the left in my diagram. 
So I don't know if that's clear, but that's, that's as good as I can do it today. <laughs> so then we turn around and say, okay, let's, uh, let's make a list of what we know. And we know that our amplitude is equal to three meters. And we know that our wavelength is equal to two meters. And we know that our velocity, that's the velocity of the crests moving to the right, is four meters per second to the right. And we know that the uh, um, value of x, the point that we're interested in, is actually five meters to the right of the origin. So if that's our origin there, it's five meters to the right of that origin. And we know that our time, the instant we're interested in, is 1.2 seconds. And if I think back about my physics class, there are two equations that are used to commonly used to work out the, the y-axis displacement of a point on a wave given the point's position relative to the origin and given the time relative to the start of the observation. And one is y is equal to the amplitude times the sine and then we get 2 pi and we get x minus vt all over lambda. So you've got to learn that equation. Um, but let's talk about it a little bit. So sine can go from plus 1 to 0 to minus 1. So what this is saying is that your y-axis displacement could be as big as plus a or could be a smaller number and could be as small as minus a. And that's pretty obvious. They're the limits. And then the amount that we modify that maximum by is determined by this part of the equation here. And what I'd like to do initially is kind of get you to ignore the minus vt. That's a time modification. And just look at this 2 pi x over lambda. So let's look at here. Um, x is how far we are along in the x direction. And lambda is a wavelength. So x over lambda is saying, well, how many wavelengths are you along the x-axis? And if you're a whole number of wavelengths, I've got to draw this in here. Um, if you're a whole number of wavelengths, I'm going to do it down here so you can maybe see it. Imagine my oscillation. If you're a whole number of wavelengths, that's like going round our circular motion diagram once. And if you're two whole numbers of wavelengths, you've gone round twice. And if you're three whole wavelengths, you've gone round three times. And if you're half, you've gone round half. Well, what does that mean? If you're half, you've gone from the beginning to there. If you're because uh, that's half a wavelength. If you're a quarter, you've gone from the beginning to there. If you're an eighth, you've gone round from the beginning to there. So this 2 pi times x over lambda, I'm going to put it in a different color, actually. 2 pi times x over lambda. Let's do that in blue. 2 pi times x over lambda is a way of telling the system how far you are around, how many whole wavelengths, what fraction of a wavelength are you around in the circular motion analogy, which tells me, you know, am I one whole wavelength around? Am I one and a half? Am I one and three quarters? Am I one and three uh, seven eighths? Where, where am I? So I'm using this ratio in order to be able to modify my peak amplitude. Okay, so that's you know with a bit of with a bit of thought that that kind of becomes a little bit clearer. But we actually want to take into account time, and here's 
the, this kind of second part of it. I'm going to change the color on that time bit to try and emphasize it. And I'm going to say this is minus VT. Because what happens is, yeah, having looked at your X and seeing, you know, based on your X, what would your Y be? Ignoring time, saying time, not ignoring, but saying time, time equals zero seconds. If I want to know what the true value would be, say, uh, uh, three seconds after the start, well, the wave moves V times three seconds to the right in three seconds. It moves a certain distance to the right in three seconds. So if I want to look and see what the value would be, why do I go from where I am and move that distance to the left? If the wave is going to move to the right a certain distance in the time, I can go from where I am a certain distance to the left and ask myself, oh, that's minus VT. That's what's going to happen at X in that time. So this is, if the wave is moving to the right, I can see what's going to happen to my displacement by looking to the left along the wave. And that's what that's doing. If I have a big velocity to the right, I'll get a big movement to the left. If I get a small velocity to the right, I'll get a small shift to the left. If I get a long time, I'll get a bigger movement to the left. If I get a shorter time, I get a smaller movement to the left. And of course, that negative sign is there for a positive going wave. Because if I have a positive moving wave, I want to look to the left to see what's going to happen. And if that was a negative going wave, if it was a gave, wave, gave, wave going to the left, then I would put a positive sign there. So there's a lot going on in this equation, but it's not magic. It's a lot that can be figured out. Um, so now here's the more mundane thing, which is let's put some numbers in. So y is equal to amplitude is 3, sine 2 pi x. Uh, let's have a look. x was 5 meters to the right, minus v. v is 4 meters per second times t, 1.2. All over lambda. Lambda was 2. So assuming I've done this all right, we'll get y is equal to 3 sine 2 pi 5 minus 4.8 over 2. So y is equal to 3 sine. 2 pi, this is going to be 0 0.2 over 2. Y is equal to 3 sine 2 pi times 0 0.1. Y is equal to 3 sine 0 0.2 pi, which equals um, clear. Check them in radians, I am sine 0.2 times pi, enter, times 3. And that's going to be 1.763. So this is 1.763 meters. Positive, meaning it's pointing upwards. Um, and the answer is there, which is kind of good. People say to me, you know, students sometimes say, well, why do you write all these steps down? And my answer is because I want to get more of them right the first time. And when I used to do things in my head, stuff like this, just simple arithmetic, I would find I would make slips. And then what was even worse was because I hadn't written anything down, I couldn't find the slip when I reviewed my work. 
So now I write all my steps down, pretty much. More complicated it is the more steps I write down. And I can easily check this uh, to make sure that what, I, what I've written down is what I meant to write down. So it's a very interesting problem. There's an equation to learn. And I believe that if you figure out what the different bits of the equation are doing, I think you stand a much better chance of, of first of all, understanding it. And secondly, being able to cope with a situation where, for example, I say that it's moving at four meters per second to the left. And then you can, you can figure out, you know what to do with the signs because you understand why the signs are there. And there we have it.